Hattie. Mmm, I forgot my butt. Don't matter. Mmm, we're on the set of Robotech Meets the Transformers. It has begun. A few test shots of the opening scene pulls us into the movie. It's, it's, uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna watch it, the dailies. Um, so, we learned a little more about the, the, the Macross saga, vicarious through, uh, through the, uh, yeah, some reviewers online. They did an extensive review of the, of the, uh, Macross 2012 flashback episode, and apparently, in that story, uh, the it's not the SDF three that gets lost. It's the SDF two. It's the Mega Road. The SDF two Mega Road two gets lost. It's called the Mega Road or the Macross, the ship. Um, it's the SDF two, not the SDF three. So the scene where they fight Chiron at the end of Macross, the Macross section uh, in the Japanese, they they then went on canonly canonically in this sort of OVA sequel, Macross Flashback, they went on to go into space afterward and were lost. So they're actually taking off of the uh, American one, which had no ending in the third part of Robotech. And they're saying, like, oh, yeah, that kind of happened in our, our version, but earlier, in, like, 2012 instead. Um, it, it, it doesn't work in the American one because that's not what happened. They built the STF-3, they're going to go to the stars. It's different. And uh, the expedition is different. The ship is lost. Um, in the Macross series, they begin colonizing other planets, uh, sending out other SDF ships, other other mega roads, and other Macrosses. And um, and, uh, and uh, the the Macross three and four settle the planet Eden from Macross Plus, and then they go on. And the Macross seven under Max Sterling or Max Genius. Uh, goes out and meets the the the, uh, the the vampire aliens the after the spiritual the uh, not the vaja that's in the second one uh, the uh, what do they call them the proto devils the proto devils meets them uh, they fight them the, the macross is part of this million person ship thing and it's connected mainly in Trotty, I guess a million of them um, <laughs> uh, so yeah they have this uh, and then in Macross 2 was some of the other animators went and did their own thing. It's supposed to be 80 years later. It's not connected. It's not canon in either universe. It's its own thing. <laughs> so Macross 2, yeah, with the uh, with the uh, Marduk and the and the, and the, the, the Eliminators is different. It's one of the Zentradi uh, Meltrandi spinoff uh, where they sing. Uh, and they stop the SDF guns. It, it didn't uh, the creators of the show did not consider that canon, even though they some of them produced it. So then you come to the uh, the American series, which was Robotech, uh, where where they took Macross and two unrelated series. Uh, they took the second one of Space Cavalry Southern Cross, and they took uh, uh, Space Climber Matsupedia the New Generation, uh, and used that the Legus Robo one, the, the Scott Bernard and the Invid. <laughs> so the uh, the uh, the original one the original was uh, uh, originally Southern Cross took place on a Mars-like planet with two moons, and uh, it was somebody else. It wasn't Dana Sterling. It was somebody else, and there had no, no connection to the other one. There was a fourth series called Super Dimension Orgus. Probably heard of that one. Uh, with these little battle walker things, and Orga elements of Orgus were included kind of in 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 Southern Cavalry, but kind of not. Uh, we didn't they didn't end up uh, translating that to the US. I've seen some of it, and it fits in the Southern Cross timeline. So what they did is when they did Megaz Megazone 23 and tried to adapt part of it, they decided to combine it with footage from from that and from and they went to create uh, Robotech the movie. And um, that didn't work so well. Uh, the, the website is wrong on that one. It says that it only aired in Texas. It did not only air in Texas, because I saw it in a theater. So my friend and I saw it in a theater. It did air in San Jose as well. Not just not just Texas. It aired in San Jose in, in the 80s. And we went and saw it. 
And um, uh, yeah, it was a premiere. We we saw it. And I remember seeing it in the theater and going, like, "What is this? A Southern Cross and thing." Um, <laughs> and then there was like a, a Southern Cross thing, and then the Invid Invasion thing. The other one, the uh, the other one, the Invid Invasion uh, or uh, Space Climber, Matt Cepeda had a um, it was a so they went on with Space Climber, Matt Cepeda, and the American one. And, 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 uh, we have, we have, uh, the expedition force comes back to Earth to liberate the Earth. That was not the original story. The original story didn't have Rick Hunter's expeditionary force at all, because it was a completely different series. They just redubbed everything and said, oh no, this is Scott Bernard, Mars section and Jupiter section, and they're going to go there and they're going to liberate the Earth from the invent. Original version, not the case. And a lot of those scenes were changed around. We don't need to go into all the details of how that worked. Wolf was different. The cowboy revenge story was different. It's more of a samurai story in their version. Um, uh, the, the, the ending is, is different. There's no search for Rick Hunter at the end because Rick Hunter's not in it. Uh, when Jupiter's section is wiped out and the Invid wipe out Bernhard Bernhard at the end, uh, that's it. They're gone. And then and Scott Bernard is just going back to Mars. Now, since then, those since then those stories we don't have those anymore. As we, all all the DVDs uh, they're gone. Uh, but when we did, uh, we were able to do the, the look back and check for the facts. Now you're just gonna have to look it up. Uh, so, uh, but but the uh, but our stuff is still around uh, online and elsewhere. So so we have um, yeah. So so this. Uh, Macross flashback was done, I think, in 88 or 89 or something. It was later on. So, yeah, so they went back and did that. And they did an OVA called Macross Zero as well, which is canon with the, that's a prequel, sort of. Um, it's weird. Uh, and then you have uh, Macross 7 that I mentioned. And you have Frontier, which came out a few years later. Uh, and in Frontier, Macross Frontier, you have different singing people and they're going after mysterious things. Uh, there's a, there's the Vaija and there's the, uh, there's the, there's the, there's a virus, I think it's a virus is attacking them. That one. Yeah. Space virus, kind of thing. Um, computer virus, kind of thing. Alien, uh, Independence Day, <laughs> but in space, but with robots, but with singing people and singing stars. It's kind of connected to Macross Plus, which came out earlier because it kind of has this this AI is doing the virus, yeah. Um, also, yeah, Top Gun kind of ripped off Robotech with the Tomcats and all that. They came later in '86, so Robotech was already here. So Macross was '83, and then it came here. And Robotech was '85, '86, so a little bit before Top Gun. They were not aware of Top Gun. It's just like, the <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Uh, now there's a new one, uh, and then there was, and then there's Macross Delta. Uh, which is more about them finally going out and trying to find out what happened to the mysterious Miss M, who could be, is, it's supposed to be Minmi. It's Minmi. Uh, they keep guessing, oh, is it Lisa Hiyashi and Lisa Hayes? Or, no, it's Minmi. It's supposed to be Minmi. It's who it's supposed to be. No. Um, <laughs> and, and there's a, and a, there was a movie version. They did a movie at that, too. Um, but back in the 80s, they did, the Japanese saw the, the, cheesy Robotech movie thing and and they're all oh we can do a Robotech a Macross movie that's better than the American one so so not not long after that they came out with Macross Do You Remember Love which was a an OVA of the original Macross and then it is sort of like reinvented to like as a propaganda film for the other story it was actually re reprinted as a propaganda film and that's where they got the idea for Macross flashback as well. They can say, like, okay, this this is when that aired. It aired in uh, 2030, but we're looking back to 2012. It aired during the events of Macross Plus. Okay. <laughs> Macross uh, 7 is, uh, it's all complicated. 2046, Macross Frontier is 2060, I think, somewhere around there. That's quite a bit later. Uh, it's on the STF-12 or something. Uh, Macross uh, Frontier. Delta is on uh, yeah, the, the, 12, the 
SDF way off. Uh, it's the SDF like 15 or something. I think I think that's what it is. It's one of those the later ships. And and the movie ver they did an OVA of that one too. They did two movies of Delta. We saw the 2018 one. That again is is messed up in the wiki uh, because uh, they said oh it only aired in certain places in the U.S. and they didn't mention all the places the uh, the movie aired. Uh, Crunchyroll put on a version of it at uh, at Fanime back in I think 2017. I think that's when that was when we watched that. Um, so <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah that was the one where they uh, they 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 raised the stakes to the point that they had you know you figure at the end well how are they gonna how are they gonna like top the you know Macross Frontier thing with the singers blowing up the galaxy thing and destroying the vampires and whatever well and and galaxy spanning bad guys you have two sdf fortresses fight each other so that's what they did in the movie so they're like so they actually these two macrosses are like shooting at each other like going at it like, like kaiju like giant huge miles tall kaiju like fight each other yeah that's what you do <laughs> yeah um that's what you do you have to do so, yeah. Um, so there's your brief history of Robotech. Uh, yeah, and uh, other things. Uh, the, the ship model back there uh, was, we started building that right around when the scripts were being written in, in the, yeah, in the fall of last year. Uh, putting that together, uh, pieces together and stuff. Up until February, I think, or something like that. Of uh, yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, it, it kept getting larger. <laughs> we wanted to like do the whole psych thing, like they pan from the old one from the G one animated fan films, or the ones that we did, and, and to uh, to the to the bigger one right next to it. But like, oh shit! No, they're not gonna show that ship. Oh no, wait! Oh no, wait! Oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> But yes, it's it's heavy. I think it weighs about 20 pounds. <laughs> it seems like it. 15, 20 pounds. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, you can't use balsa anymore, so it's made out of light, light bass wood and stuff. Bass wood and other stuff. Light pines and things. Yeah, superstructure is bass wood. Balsa. There's uh, the double superstructures inside. I still wouldn't want to drop it. Just, you know, it, it'd be bad. Uh, it, it, it got moved and the piece did break off, but we were able to find the piece and glue it back on. <laughs> but yes, um, so, uh, so yeah, the, um, so, yeah, and it almost dropped again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, so we have this ship, uh, the, the front end part of it is similar to the Mega Roto 2, pays homage to it, and the SDF 3 from the, from Sentinels movie. The Sentinels movie was in eighteen eighty seven, and it was direct to video. I don't think they made any theatrical releases at our local art house theater. I don't think it came out over there. Do you remember Love Did? So did Attack of the Bionoids, the other version. But I don't think they released that one here. No, they. I think they did Macross Plus once. That was cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they had permission. I think they just aired it. They said, hey, want to watch Macross Plus? We're going to play it. <laughs> We've got a copy of it. <laughs> but but I can't be certain of that. Maybe they had permission. Um, yeah. So last year, Harmon Gold finally said, all right, we don't any longer want a moratorium on the copyrights of releasing Macross stuff in the U.S. anymore. It's been 35 years. Uh, why are we holding on to this when we're never going to do another one? <laughs> But first, let's backtrack to, uh, so they're not going to, so they're releasing some of them over here. So, so, uh, anymore. Uh, so we can do ours too, but that's okay, because, yeah. But, um, but yeah, the, the other, they attempted to do a legitimate Robotech spinoff in 2006. It was called, uh, they, they, they did, uh, yeah, the Shadow Chronicles. And, and, uh, yeah. And of course, our trans tech, the Transformers meets Robotech from the 2000s, was on video and then DVD first, and then uh, YouTube it still is, uh, and uh, two versions of it: the uh, shorter version and the long blog version. We can watch the 24 episodes, or you can watch 
the three three-hour movies as three-hour movies. You can watch either or for free. Um, <laughs> also, you can watch Space Bridge, Return of the Shadows, the Shadow Children, and all that. All the spin-offs of that. And, of course, all Transformers Mush and Lexicons of this and that. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, all that. Uh, we, we took the Lexicons and Mush scripts and used them uh, Transformer scripts that other people wrote in their in their blogs and uh, fan scripts the best ones we could find and we used them yeah, so so we don't have we don't have um any any say in what they're about we just use the script so they get a byline if they if they had something to do with this one um, but but uh, the yeah the uh, they tried this Shadow Chronicles thing and then they promised more of them and they never did anymore they did Love Live Alive in 2013. And the fans were annoyed because it wasn't a new one. It was just an OVA that they had taken from an 80s OVA called Love Live Alive. And they added new footage and said, oh, yeah, it was set during the Master Saga. And it was uh, kind of kind of dumb. Um, yeah, and it ended with them suggesting that Lancer and Ciro were going to have a baby. They don't put a baby in there. No, no, that's not, and that's impossible. Ciro is an alien She's an invid from space. Unless she grew it in a pod somehow. That, that's not possible. She, they never said the invid were humans. They were emulating humans, but they didn't have... Yeah, that, that would not genetically work at all. Uh, see, other story ignored it entirely. So, so yeah, they're going to go look for Rick Hunter again because in that timeline it doesn't work. Well, in trans tech it does work because in trans tech the SDF-3 disappeared a couple times over the years. On its way to, on its way to other planets during the Sentinels saga, and the Sentinels books were written Jack McKinney books. He was a pseudonym for these two other guys, um, and they wrote the Sentinels books. And uh, yeah, we did an end of the we did a we adapted the end of the circle as the endless circle. Did a did a ninety minute endless circle movie after Trans Tech. I said we're going to do that, and then then we did Space Bridge. And we did the other stuff. Uh, Bioship mystery and all that. Yeah, so we did fan film versions of it because we brought Rick Hunter home at the end of Trans Tech and we continued the saga that Tommy Reunion and those guys did not want to continue. So he continued on our fan films. And yeah, so uh, we continue it again. We're going to give you, uh, this is going to be a long roundabout story. This is going to be the Sentinels. So. But because, the caveat is, that because Space Bridge happened and the Transformers interfered with the Robotech timeline from even starting in that timeline and things moved ahead and some things moved back because they, they interfered with the 2018 of the timeline the Invid Queen showed up and all that and Shadow Children. Um, this timeline is slightly different than that of Robotech. This is like, like yeah, it's not Robotech 2, it's not bad. <laughs> Uh, we took uh, all Transformers mush uh, stories uh, from Lexicon's stories that were rejected from the Lexicon's first season. But we thought the stories fit better sometime, somewhere else. The stories had space plagues and space aliens and a space gang going out and doing stuff in a town and a pot boiler cop and all that. So we were like, you know, we could do Sentinels. That thus began... Uh, we thought these stories are close enough to the McKinney stories. These guys was these guys were clearly aware of them, or at least aware of something like them. So it was all like, why can't we just like we can't use the McKinney stories? Obviously, our version of the end of the circle was very different. This would be two, and we said, well, let's do three movies. Let's do three miniseries movies. Let's do one that has the SDF three. The SDF three was going to go to Tyrol. Go to Tyrol in twenty twenty five. And let's have it go to Hadon in the second movie and go to the Hadon system because that was a major plot point in the books. And let's have it go to the Invidoptera in the third one and close the series. Give the fans Robotech signals that they never got. The Robotech OVAs, their OVAs of what the signals would have been if they kept going and they made 65 episodes and then made OVAs of them. So we're going to do that. So our OVAs of the Sentinels are sort of like love letter to the, to the Sentinels. Now, of course, uh, we can't really do the effects, like, as you can see there from the dailies here, I'm sure, uh, by the time this becomes part of the making of, 
as you can tell, it's a fan film, and we have, and uh, there's a writer strike and an actor strike going on right now. Yeah. Mmm. And so, <laughs> so, yeah, we're not in the WGA, and we're not in the Writers Guild of America, and we're not in the Screen Get Actors Guild either. So we can do our film while this is going on. This already. So we're going to do it. So we're going to put this together. And it may be the only original new Robotech Macross fan film to come out in 2023. So, mmm. It's the only one. They've released some figures. This other company released some uh, Alpha Fighter figures. But we're not going to buy those. Now we got OG Veritex Jetfires. Yeah, yeah our, our group was one of the... They were, there was a guy called TG Omega... And there were other people too, but this guy had mentioned it. There was a guy in the early 2000s who was picking up all the jet fires on eBay, all of them. And just picking up, just, if somebody bid on a jet fire, they were, it's gone. He just bought it. And he has all these jet fires. Jet fires everywhere. And, and that's the most popular video of the, the, the jet fire review other, of other jet fires. Jet fire guy. It's Cal Cat. It was us. It was Transcarta. <laughs> and was at Amicon, and he was all like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all the jet fires. I'm gonna get all the sky fires I can find because they were all flawed. The '84 one had a bad backpack, and the '85 one had a bad shoulder. So, so it got like, we got like 40 or 42 of them or something like that. And we took them all, and we rebuilt them as 20 some good ones. So I <laughs> rebuilt them." Uh, we never had the uh, Super Ostrich. We had this tiny one. We got the tiniest Super Ostrich, which we gave up later. Um, but we never had... Um, yeah, so we painted one to look like the Super Ostrich. And we painted one to look like the Island Seeker. And we painted the other ones. And there were some fans that were like freaked out. Like, oh my god, you painted your jet fires. Why would you do that? Oh. It's like, well, they're mine. I bought them. And they were yellowed. So they weren't... They aren't good. They're just there. As you can tell from Endless Circle and the other stories, those, those, those robot toys are barely standing up on their own, but they still exist. We did have one of those masterpiece of Veritex, a rook one. It broke during the Battle for Uptera scene in, I believe, it was, it broke, yeah, in that Battle for, what was that episode? It was, it was Shadow Children, probably. Yeah, Shadow Children. They show the, uh, the Uptera battle in that one. This one's going to be different. It's different because the Transformers are involved. Uh, but, but that one, and that one, the Optera battle, it's a flashback. Uh, Miria's ship breaks and the leg snaps off because that's what happened in this, to the figure. And uh, I was watching this thing today about the, the Masterpiece Veritex versus the newer ones that have come out. And they said that, they, they said that yeah, they have a design flaw in the shoulder and the leg. And if you transform them enough, they just snap right off. You're stuck with a shoulder or a leg in your hand. Great. That's great. Yeah. That's not good. Um, the, the irony is that the two blue Legos robos from Korea, that, that they're pretty banged up that I have from years ago, they didn't break. There's like one broken wing on one of them, one of the heads, I think the head's missing on one of them. But the other one's fine. I'm not going to use it in the movie, but it's fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah, I think the cowboy accent's going all over the place, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the so there is a version of the Japanese continuity where they decided Rick and Lisa and Minmay were lost in space. There is, but it's not connected to the Invid invasion. It's just they get lost in space. But apparently the ship comes back with the Minmay and the computer. In, uh, in Delta, Macross Delta. The ship comes back. It remembers Min May. It recorded her voice or something. So, so even they didn't bring them back. So we're going to bring them back. Yeah, they get, they, they'll get back. <laughs> but yeah, so, so that big caveat is the scene in the end of Shared Hallucinations when they jump to 2050 and they show the Robotech people standing around and they have children and they're making snarky comments and whatever. One of them's trans. And, and they go on about the, uh, the, the snarky Dana and stuff. Is, is it that story in 2050 canon with this? 
where we actually seeing the future of this 2025 story, 25 years later. Yes. Yes, it's canon. So that, that story is going to happen eventually, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, we're not going to get there, though. Uh, I think these two stories are going to... These are going to be the Sentinels uh, three-part thing. Uh, it's just for the Sentinels, you know, so... If we do a Beyond the Sentinels story at some point, it would have to be an original work, not just Cal Cat rewriting the, the, the these much stories to, to make them Robotech. It would have to be something original. And that would be harder to do. So, so uh, after this, we are going on to do Starship Locations and, and uh, uh, Destinations, the final season of that. Not because of the writer strike. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Uh, we just uh, wrote a final season and decided to write a final season. <laughs> um, yeah, so we wrote that in February. In February through June, I think, something like that. <laughs> February through May, I think. Um, but yeah, the, uh, yeah, so it was during the, the writer's turn. Uh, <laughs> just before it. Uh, but, but we weren't WGA, so it didn't matter. Um, and so, yeah, we want to do that first. Well, we'll see if there's future Robotech or not, or interest in it. I don't think Harmony Gold is going to sell to Sony and do a Robotech movie. I think at this point, even now, it would be really tough for them to do that. Um, they would probably get A-list actors that don't make sense as the characters. Like, like ten years ago when they were like, Tobey Maguire could totally be Rick Hunter. No. No, he can't. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, no. If you're gonna do a Robotech movie, you've got to do it like, can't do it like Ghost in the Shell and cast Scarlett Johansson as the ghost. No, the agent. No, no. That was the movie was okay, but it was not the original. You can't do that. You can't cast a white guy as as Kaneda in a Nakira movie, for instance. Keanu Reeves wanted to do that. No, no. Don't 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 even try to do Akira. Don't try to do Akira. No, it's gonna suck. Um, but no, Robotech, the whole cast has to be Japanese. It's the only way it works. The only ones that wouldn't be would be Roy Foker, his stepbrother, and, uh, and Claudia Grant, his, uh, the, the, uh, the girlfriend of, of Roy Foker. Uh, she wouldn't be either. She could be, she, uh, yeah, they could get that, that new girl to play her. She'd be tall, though, so it wouldn't be her. Uh, there, there's any number of actors they could get for that. Rick Hunter's got to be a, a Japanese guy, a Japanese actor. Uh, Min Mei's got to be a Japanese actor. Don't get Aquafina; she's Korean. That doesn't. No, that's not going to work. Her voice is not not Min Mei. It's fine, but it's not Min Mei. No, you got to get somebody that really knows how to sing, a K-pop star or something. It's got to be able to sing. Uh, it's not going to work otherwise. You can't just. Yeah, you can't just fudge that. Not going to work. Um, Korean and something else, I think. But yeah, not Aqua. I know they're probably thinking that. Oh, we're gonna get Aqua. No, no, don't do that. Uh, the, this movie, this series actually doesn't have a Min Mei in it. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming she's on the ship somewhere. I think she. I'm not sure if she has any cameos in the story or not. I just didn't think. Since the other. Since Seven and De Frontier and Delta. Seven, Frontier and Delta. And two. All of them, and, and all the other ones dealt with the pop star thing. I decided that, especially Seven, that I didn't want to do that in this version. I thought it was more interesting to have have the the, the story be similar to the T.L. Aaron stories that he was developing for the for Lexicons, the Mush thing. Or T.L. Aaron's was like, yeah, he was obsessed about, or the character in the story was obsessed about this girl. There's gangs running around. He wanted to do the whole gang thing and like a gang drug thing, and you know, kind of a kind of a weird noir, uh, dark city type of of Robotech story thing. It was more Robotech than Transformers, and he put Robotech people in it, but they were Transformers. <laughs> so he put Transformers in it, and and but they were acting like Robotech people. So I was like, why don't I just tweak that? And they are Transformers and Robotech people. <laughs> All right, that'll be my story. In parts two and three of, of this series, mainly. Part one introduces everybody, takes us to Tyrol, the moon of Phantoma in the Valvary system, and, uh, and uh, clarifies where that is. 
the Valvery system. They were always saying this, the Army of the Southern Cross and all that, and down in the Southern Cross, because that sounded cool. But I don't think they originally meant that the planet was in the Southern Cross. It's in the direction of the Centaurus area. Just so happens that Alpha Centauri and Proxima are the closest star to the Earth. And in the, in the books, at least, they said, oh, Phantoma is in the Centaurus system. It would have to be. That would have to be where that is. Uh, and maybe, maybe, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's over there. So, As for the Invid planet and the other Hadon planet, they're in different places. Uh, but yeah, um, but I think, yeah, the Centauri. And then maybe, maybe Barnard is kind of Hadon's planet, uh, Barnard's star. Maybe Sirius is the last one. They're probably not Sirius. There's something close by. They're not that far off. Otherwise, they would never get home. Um, oh, and their superliminal drive thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, years may be passing on Earth, but uh, they have several months for them. I think it's days, but it's, it's months. Uh, so, yeah, oh, which they discover, uh, which is consistent with the books. So, yeah, each planet they go to. And they only go to a new planet each movie, so to make it easier to follow. Because you want to tell a story that's going. Yeah, so a whole lot to uh, unpack there. Um, but now I can unpack some of it because, yeah, because we're going to do it. And uh, at least uh, start it out here. Um, we can because we're not in the Screen Actors Guild. It's already written, so. <laughs> but I wrote it, so, you know, what was like? I didn't write, I did. I wrote like a third of it. Was it order? Yeah, other, other people from lexicons contributed, well, not directly, but we, we took lexicons story ideas that were cool, that seemed like Robotech, and included them, or Transformers, and included them in the story with a wraparound, the Calcat wraparound, um, to make them fit. So they have been rewritten, but they, yeah, they, they won't have credits. They, they have names like Roy and Dwayne M and, and Aaron's, but they're, they're not the original Aaron's stories in that uh, they took out, I took out almost all the violence because we can't film that for YouTube. It's not kind of cool. Uh, PG-13, probably most likely. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, endangerment of the characters. Otherwise, there would be nothing, um, but they're plastic, so don't worry about it, YouTube. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so there's enough of it in there. We were just impressed with uh, Aaron's, uh, T.L. Aaron's uh, short story that we included in one episode of The Mush earlier and wanted some of his other wits and uh, twisted characters in this one. Uh, some of his characters are in this one, like uh, like Talomsky and yeah, the psychic lady, the band, or <laughs> Jameson. <yeah. laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's like stuff, this goofy stuff in here. From him. Uh, but he didn't actually think of that though. He, that's that idea is basically that TV show from like 20 years ago, uh, the, the the analyst or whatever the heck it was with the the cop and the psychic cop. Yeah, is it, the, the mentalist or something. Yeah, so that's been done like at least twice. So it's not like he thought of. Ooh, the cop knows a, a fake psychic. It's like, they've been doing that for, like, years. <laughs> they've, and, that, and that's just the newest version of that show. I think they've been doing something like that for, like, probably since the days of radio. Like, oh, yeah, just bring this guy who knows stuff. It's all the case. And I, yeah, that's not something he thought of. He just had a different spin on it. He didn't think of, like, biker gangs and Dana Sterling either. Uh, he didn't think of biker gangs. That was around since before, so. A space biker king, or robot biker king is kind of cool. Um, robot doppelganger biker king is like, uh, sort of a they live kind of thing. Going on. Again, he didn't think of that movie. That was <laughs> he didn't think of that. Um, but yeah, the idea that the Transformers effectively changed everything, and that the space plague from space plague from from uh, all Transformers much also changed things. In the Robotech universe, to affect the uh, the Invid and the Zentradi and how they behave and how the Masters behave, because otherwise, 
it would be a slaughter and the SDF-3 would immediately get destroyed. Uh, because again, Min Mei's not there to sit. Where is she? Uh, it's not a mystery in this story that, that, that uh, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't include the singing. I thought that it would detract from it. I wanted to tell the story. There's a little bit of singing, though. I think that Regis sings at one point. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Which is connected to Macross Delta and, and Macross 7 a little bit. Yeah. There's a little bit of that in there. And yes, there, 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 is, um, there is an homage to 7. Uh, yeah, the, and there's a there's an homage to uh, the other two as well, Aurora and Athena, and the, I believe that uh, yeah, Mia, Mia shows up at one point. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I think so. But all, all the Sterling kids, and of course the uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Half of this stuff is probably not going to happen, so don't 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 take it verbatim. Um, whatever happens, uh, film the first movie, see what happens. But but yeah, the. Um, would like to finish all three. Yeah, we, we don't have permission to use them, but we're using them anyway. But, but uh, yeah, we're not getting paid. And they're not getting paid. Nobody's getting paid. And we're not going to sell this. It's just going to go up online and you won't watch it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. That's pretty much it. Um, long diatribe on the making of, and I probably went over some stuff I already did, but yeah. Oh, space aliens. Centradi. Yeah, so the Centradi were affected, and the Invid were affected too, by the space plague. The space plague of unknown origin, and the humans were, so, so they were in quarantine <laughs> for a while. Sounds familiar. Um... So yeah, they were affected, so things have changed. And uh, there was a jump off point. That evens the story a little bit more, so it's not just that Rick Hunter and his forces would get utterly slaughtered by the invid, because why wouldn't they? Uh, it's more like, no, wait, it's kind of messed up. Messed up. Hmm. Here we are. That, uh, it's a little lower than the set from upstairs. A little lower to the ground. Doesn't look like much yet, but this is the, uh, this here's the background. This is a, uh, proof of concept of the actual, like, floor set of the, uh, before they put the, uh, sound stages on it. Of the uh, miniature sound stages of the, uh, the set. Let's get this here light over here. You can see it all purdy like. See all the flaws in it if I turn this light on. There. This little rain lamp's gonna show us all the design flaws in it. Okay, here we have uh, that's a, that's gonna be that'll be pushed down. By the weight of the uh, set, these should all be flat. You're mainly going to shoot footage. These should all be flat when when there's something heavy on. Them. Yeah, so you have you have um, your basic set. Um, little Robotech on this table. Table underneath. Looks like part of it is going to fall right now. But yeah, you have. Uh, a little behind the scenes thing. This is what the that's what's bowing it is this edge that is coming up on that end. And you've got the boxes holding it up underneath. I set those two corner pieces in there just to demonstrate that's where those go. They don't have to go there. Um, usually, when you have a set like this for a typical transformer thing. You usually form a lot of close-ups of the robots, or half close-ups, or, or just very, very few distant shots, because you don't want to show like it's really obvious. Set well, it's it's action figures. That's fine. This is not a space set. This is the actual like uh, bottom like thing of the uh, the set, the actual flooring of the whole thing. Uh, such as it is. And that's just behind the scenes.
going on the thing. Robotech. And uh, I'll probably perfect it more tomorrow. Got around a. It's all dried and everything. Only a slightly uh, touched up part there. Nothing in here. We didn't touch up anything in here. Out in the garage. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we have so far on this here uh, set thing. Hopefully the cat don't come in, jump on this, and knock it right over. Psst. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah, uh, there it is. So, that's a wrap for the evening. Yeah. I'll be on the scenes. Making of. Uh, this is the... These are the old panels to the original bridge. And that actually is the baseboard of the original bridge. It was also uh, repurposed as the set of the the, the Voyager on, on on Star Trek Chimera. So it was the Voyager, and it was also the Klingon ship in in Chimera. And it was the it was the uh, still is the stuff still fits on it. So why not? Um, and uh, yeah, so we repurposed it and updated it for the early century. Uh, uh, yeah, not as cluttered. Yeah, as the other bridges, which does change the timeline, but the timeline is changed because the transformers are there. So here we have, here we have it. Take that it's probably a little further back. It's a bridge too far, I tell you. A bridge to Terrapia. Space bridge. But there's the space bridge. Yeah. And it's the uh, bridge also from from uh, Space Bridge, the movie, yeah, the movie, <laughs> and uh, the Bioship mystery and all that, and the Space Shadow Children, same bridge, no, which is repurposed for the, you know. uh, it used to be that in the, I like turn to me, so, it, uh, and it doesn't matter that that, it's on, then turn it off, it doesn't matter, this is making of, uh, the brief is that in old sci-fi shows like Star Trek in the 60s, and then Battle of the Planets and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, space Battleship Yamato, which would be Star Blazers, Ro Robotech, and Macross. Uh, they, they figured computers were really big back then. So we have to make our couches and chairs and consoles. Captain Avatar's console in the Yamato thing is this giant thing that's like a pod. And, and the helm and navigation console is this giant thing in front of Wildstar. Or in front of the Robotech people, where the whole thing was like a submarine or a battleship inside. They both were battleships inside. Uh, and, and But all the consoles were really close together and they didn't have miniaturization back then. They figured the computers would be really huge. The bigger they are the better and uh, they would have all those designs. Even though really in order to build Veritex you'd have to have miniaturization somewhere. Otherwise, otherwise uh, you couldn't fit all the parts inside the Veritech to transform it. So, so, it's, so they have that. Um, yeah, so the, the bridge looking different is just a reflection of the, the timeline. It's, it's kind of like J.J. Abrams redid the Enterprise bridge but made it look way too advanced. And, but then they redid it for the, the Kiva Goldsman Star Trek, the Strange New Worlds, and they made it look less advanced but more modern and had some of the kind of the big console ideas thrown in there. Make it look more like the TOS bridge with the big consoles. I figured in this case, though, the Transformers have interacted with the Robotechs in 2018 in the timeline, so they changed things, that, that this is the other Robotech universe, it's not the universe everyone knows and loves as Robotech, it's not the Macross universe either, it's it's a universe aware of the other universe, but uh, so they're going out on the, uh, the Sentinel story, and it's 2025, and so they, they have to have a bridge and a ship. And I figured that, that uh, with the G.I. Joes, they're a little, they're smaller in scale, they're, they're three and a quarter, and um, instead of five inch, so the scale is weird, so the, the seats are too big or they're too small, actually the little, little chairs were actually kind of, the consoles were kind of too small for the five inch ones, so it's kind of funny that they, they, they fit the G.I. Joes better, and we didn't need all that clutter behind the deck, like behind the ship and all. I had doctored up some of the ship pieces, but I didn't need to, I don't need to use them because it clutters the bridge. 
need to get the camera in there, you need to film the scenes. They, they don't need a giant bulky pot. They just need consoles bolted to the floor. And that's it. <laughs> Where they're going. If you're with the, with the SDF-3A, they have learned from the mistakes in the other timeline and this timeline, and they fixed it. So they said, well, why, why are we doing these extra things that are huge? We don't need them. So anyway, uh, yeah, this is a bridge thing. We're going to reshoot the meeting room scene. It's very important to the teaser to reshoot that and go on from there. Yeah, so we're going to reshoot that because there were some errant cat hairs. There's also some weird camera angles. Reshoot that. Uh, the the meeting between Max and Rick is fine, but the meeting with uh, all the other characters in in the base is not. There are some problems with it. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Scene pickups for Lisa Hayes and for for Dr. Lang's speech, just to make sure there's no air in cat hair. There was cat hair on him. So the, the speech and the girl, we want to nail that, those two scenes, um, right now. So that's what's going to happen. A little making up. Just a little making up. Not a lot, because we don't really need a lot of it. Uh, we don't need a lot of it. This is a trans tech type of movie. You got your stuff going on. You got your redid some scene pickups and then did the bridge. Then watched the dailies and then did some pickups of that just now. Um, yeah. So so pretty much that's all for now. I, uh, the making of is not necessary for most of this. It's it's uh, unless something spectacularly cool happens. Weren't uh, I mean we talked about these these Robotech beats the Transformers thing considerably in behind the scenes footage. There's really no reason to double back and go on about that. It's interesting that the uh, that what their <laughs> uh, the the Robotech thing is kind of in keeping with the books in that they reveal that it's a year later at the end of the narration. Uh, but for them it's only mo it's only a month. Well, it's only a week. It's about less than a week for them. But, but years go by um, elsewhere. So cyberliminal drive, yeah. Um, they don't know that, though. They, they get there, yeah. And, and um, we'd seen Ant-Man Quantumania, which came out after the story was written. But there was the idea that the ants in that movie fell through the vortex first, got there ahead of them somehow, and did things. Well, that's kind of what happened with the Transformers in this, even though they're not related at all, the Vortex thing. Uh, so the Transformers that were going with them, the other Autobots and Decepticons, not main ones, but other ones, that were similar to main ones, one of them looks like Galvatron, uh, they were pulled through as well, but they were pulled through faster. So they arrived ahead of them. Their ship was faster, basically. Their ships got in, in faster because their ships worked better. So their ships got there years ago. And encountered the, uh, the the aliens and all that, which they'll figure out shortly when they when they get there and go like, wait a minute, how did you guys get here ahead of us? Uh, yeah, um, so you'll figure that out. Figure, oh yeah, it's like it's like they were already here for years. It's like when you have a slow boat in a colony science fiction story, and the slow boat's on its way to a planet, uh, similar in, to the Endover saga as well. The, the slow boat is the one that gets there slowly where all the other ships pass it up and get to the planet ahead of it as their engines improve. So that's kind of what happened. So, <laughs> kind of. Um, yeah, so yeah, you'd end up with a slow boat that arrives, like, well, for them it's weeks later or whatever, and, and it's been years and stuff. Um, <laughs> mm, pushing them ahead. Uh, imagine the uh, timeline keeps up. It's not that confusing. It's probably what would happen. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and it's not far enough off that it doesn't, yeah, it also helps with the T.L. Aaron stuff later. It makes that make more sense if there's, yeah, a couple of years in between when they're in space jumps. And it lines up with Robotech because it's kind of, the universe is rewriting it so it matches timeline, even though the Transformers are involved, so it makes it different. Um, yeah, so... I don't know if that makes any sense. You don't really have to have seen Space Bridge. It helps, but yeah, probably have to watch Space Bridge. It helps. 
and uh, and the Shadow Children and the Bioship Mystery and all that. If you watch those, then that helps to identify at least where the 2018 people that are now being reflected in the 2025 people uh, in the story that they are the 2018 people now in the well in the future 2025, and they're going on the mission that that should have happened earlier but didn't because of the space play. So it's kind of silly and too. Anyway, so, yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, it's not that convoluted. It really isn't, and I don't want to ramble on about it too much because just get on you know, with the story. <laughs> so, like, howdy. <laughs> well, tonight's adventure was brought to you by, <laughs> this evening's adventure was brought to you by doing the bridge scene. Uh, there's a, there's, I think there's, there aren't any other bridge scenes in the movie. Uh, there's, you're gonna go back. And you're gonna just shoot the uh, shoot the uh, the first squadron scouting party, and they meet Tall Spike, and Hunter goes out there and meets him. Um, you do that first, and then Hadon scene goes in there. Yeah, so that that's that's a little after the Tall Spike scene. It's probably more like Tall Spike is talking to him on a screen, because because having him actually meet him is, is yeah, it doesn't. Well, I guess they could do that, but then where were the other Autobots? It's, it's a little weird, the scene, but I guess it has to be in there. So maybe they suss it out when they, when they go out twice. Out in space. I don't know how we're going to do the space scenes. My guess is they're on the hull of the ship most of the time or near it, so the gravity pulls them down so they can like, be walking around on the ship. Because <laughs> it is pretty big. It's miles long, so they can be on the, on the, on the hull. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the, the SDF one is like two miles long or something like that. Whereas the SDF three, this one is like five. It's huge. It's enormous. Um, so yeah, so it's really big. Um, the fleet's kind of inside it. Is the thing that comes out. But yeah, I uh, don't know how we're gonna do that, but we won't worry about it yet. Um, or, or how we're gonna do a space combat. But this bridge scene apparently ends with them surviving the whole thing and coming back and all that. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, we basically did all the bridge scenes until the end of the end of book one, basically, because we didn't intend to do bridge scenes a lot. We just intended bridge scenes as bumpers. And no, we're not going to run on ahead and do book two and book three, do all the bridge scenes. We're just going to say, okay, for now the bridge scene is over, and we're going to do other scenes in other places in the movie. Now it's very ambitious script, and it's and it, most of the arrival, the first episode, the first 25 minutes, is based on a Cal Cat Silly Kelly story. And uh, so it's added on there. It's a, it's a very condensed version of the Sentinels battle when they go to the Sentinels planet um, from, uh, from the, the outtakes of Robotech Sentinels, basically. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, so that's what it is. It's, yeah, and uh, they, they get their, their Tyrol. That's awesome. So it's the... Kintara system. I don't know if it is in the books. In the books, it's somewhere else, but said that kind of have to be. And yeah, yeah, the um, the other story hooks up is not. Yeah, we're fine. Um. Yeah, the idea that, that it's its own timeline because things are happening. Events are different in this timeline. This isn't a true sequel prequel to Robotech. It is a fan film based on elements of Robotech meets the Transformers and Trans Tech and all that. So, oh yeah. And uh, and uh, Hadon there is a, is a Galvatron, beat up Galvatron, and he's actually missing a hand that was found earlier. Uh, but but he gets rejuvenated. He goes down to the planet to get rejuvenated by the planet. So he gets turned into TV one. Anyway, so I'm leaving with that. Yeah. So, what's going on is that we're going to shoot, uh, we just shot the, the, the last, there were like two bridge scenes left in the whole first miniseries epic movie. Just two. Those two. And that's it. There are no more. So I thought, well, let's just film those. Uh, it appears that we have about four or five in book two, and three in, that's not three, and then in book three, uh, and we could shoot all the bridge scenes, and we just talked about doing that, and thought, that's kind of awkward stuff, how would we know where they are? But we wouldn't know where they were, because we could set up the file, so that it's, oh, this is the, 
Now, this is episode one, episode two, and episode three, and these are the bridge scenes, so you can do it that way. Um, yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll go on to do the other ones, and this is that one. So, we decided to do it. Just, yeah. Then we can do the other sets and make everything look cool. Veritex and all that. So, we're just doing a little more of the, uh, of the Veritex, uh, introducing the Veritex scene. The Veritex, uh, the robots meeting uh, Tall Spike. Uh, I wanted to do that here today as well, just to, just to establish new footage from book one. Yeah, and we're not going to do the Decepticon attack scene yet, because that's a little more complicated. We're just doing the part where they meet Tall Spike. Really, they're kind of just sitting on the ship, talking to him. Uh, so it's, it's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's it for the evening then. So for Saturday night, we, we weren't actually going to do some Saturday film, but we ended up doing it anyway. So, so Saturday filling in the can, basically the uh, the Veritex scene without the special effects, and the uh, and the uh, Decepticon base camp ship, and the Autobot base camp ship, and decided, uh, different from the script, that they actually go over to the ship, and meet them in their Veritex. Just more dramatic that way. He was on his way there anyways. So he rushed back over there to go meet him. We don't know how much time passed when he went back to the ship and went back to the bridge and when they went on their recon mission. He totally could have done that. He could have gone back out there. Yeah, so it makes sense. Uh, and it's more dramatic to have them actually kind of face each other and meet. So we have the Decepticons meeting them and then the Autobots meeting them, basically. Uh, the, uh, the, the first 20 some chapters of this, 20, 20 chapters, of, of this are are the arrival, the Cal Cat story that was thrown in the beginning to sort of join the other stories to it and make it a Robotech story. Otherwise, it would just be Transformers, as you can probably tell from the ending of it. So they're like, oh, by the way, the three Decepticon villains you're going to meet later, we're going to meet them now so that they know they met. Then we're going to meet the Autobot good guys. We'll meet them now so they met. Yeah, it's a little quick and, and dirty, but... That's what we did, and, and I think it works because you just want to get to the action. Uh, so many other Hollywood movies where Hollywood, they want to ramble on, and we don't. Also, um, as of lexicons, we also didn't add a lot of extra exposition in the background while doing the scenes. We just did the lines and stopped, which uh, which didn't burn up as much camera. Uh, we would like burn up film, rambling on in the background about stuff that had nothing to do with the Transformers. And it was just like, why were we doing that? It's just, just, you don't need to ramble about other stuff in the background that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. Um, yeah. Uh, Christopher Nolan would love this stuff. He'd be rambling on concessively. And he doesn't need to. He could just cut that stuff out. But yeah, when you're trying to tell a fan film with action figures, get to the story quickly. <laughs> There's my fan film trying to get to the story quickly. Don't worry so much about about explaining your universe. Just go there and enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's well, that's interesting. So we got a scene here. We decided to go on ahead, real brief, real brief afterward here on a Sunday evening, and uh, we did a scene where we're. Where we developed the emotions of some of the robots in Remy there. Gave Remy a human form because she does, she's a trans detector. She's a Nebulon master person. I think this is a, that's a, 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 a the, a, yeah, Scarlett Johansson character from Marvel. Oh, well. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we had to have Remy in there because that made that scene make sense. Also, the emotional impact makes sense. Also, Having a scene where, apparently off camera, some of them got to know each other at a party and came back. A party for Optimo, who doesn't show up for the party. Uh, and then this scene after, after is kind of fun because you get to have, you get to have like, uh, character development, story, the story. Uh, Christopher Nolan would like that kind of thing. A little too much for him, but, but uh, yeah. So the idea that they do, they do for reasons, yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, at first, we almost didn't do the scene, and then I thought, no, no, this is this scene makes the scene. This scene makes the episode make sense. Without this scene, 
we just get robots that go with other robots and hang out and do things that are juxtaposed to other things that Decepticon robots are doing. And it's much cooler to have a scene where we have the human characters and the robots behaving with emotions and in context, and it develops our characters more. Yeah, there you go. Here we are on the set, and um, and we come to some scenes in this story, distant early warning, where uh, they just transitioned out of nowhere to other places. It was probably no transition to the original script. Uh, yeah, so what you want to do is, um, uh, I don't think that this scene with uh, these Robotechs is connected to that other scene with Remy and, and, the, and Kebel. I think that that's going to be a scene where they, they come back to the cave looking for them. So we're going to do that. And it's going to be separate. Although they're probably aware of what they're up to. They seem to be aware somehow. Um, but they haven't met them because that would be confusing. How would the, how would the robots have met the others? So, so there's a sort of continuity issues there. Yeah, hopefully fix that. So we did another pretty much a well, half day of filming, and we got through the first third of this movie, of this miniseries. The first hour, basically. We got through the first hour. We didn't get to the end of this episode quite yet. The end of this episode is page 60. Uh, but we did get through the end of, of this particular segment. Yeah, but So there's a Primus scene that's going to be next. But that's different. Wanted it would at least rescue... Um, Optimo from the from the planet where she was being violated by the evil Regis, uh, you know, and it was and it was his his girlfriend that saved him. It was Andromeda, his, his, his ex. Well, not his ex, but estranged girlfriend, and it was played by Alita One. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's that's fun. Um, yeah, so mm, anyway. So yeah, next tomorrow more more stuff. This this is all making of it. Really, there's not much to say. <laughs> we don't need to add anything extra about anything extra for character names and things. We, we don't need that. Well, got all the way to the end of this here episode. Uh, the the episode we got through the ten pages there went straight through for two hours of film footage, and uh, yeah, so mmm, it's a lot for one day actually. Mm. So, hey, there we go. Um, and some lunch or something. Yeah. Well, it's a pretty much a full day of filming. This is Clint Capo on set. Uh, yeah, I did uh, three hours of filming. Well, three hours is going to be muddled down to 30 minutes, probably. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're in the middle of, of The Cavern of Temptation by Dwayne M. Don't know who he is. Uh, also, we uh, modified the credits to include all of the names from these books. So the credits have been fixed, even though pre-credits have been fixed. So, so all the names are in there. They're all on board. So, so we have, um, yeah, we have, we also have a puzzling scene next time or tomorrow. Uh, in that, in that, I don't think that in the judge scene, we would have humans in the room because they just established outside that the humans wouldn't go in there. So, they, he wouldn't even hallucinate humans in there. He wouldn't know them, so so the, the robot can't have humans in there. Um, so I will go about changing the script so that so that Dana doesn't show up to meet Optimo in the courtroom scene that is fictionalized in his head while the aliens mess with him. Yeah, so that's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta be somebody else. It's probably Streets. Yeah, or one of the other Autobots. Because then it could be. That, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So this was uh, tonight's filming on the 2nd of August, and uh, that's, that's it for tonight. Mark's cards. Excellent. Uh -huh. Excellent. Uh, and the set of... Uh, back functional and not sick. You Tested caught the long one or something. I, I wouldn't call it a long well, one. Well, middle, the middle wage one. I caught the long one. <laughs> um, no, it was. Uh, I was out of commission for about two weeks. Um, That's longer than 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 the. Than the I've talked problem, to people who've had it for months. So, I've, I, as far as I'm concerned, I dodged a bullet. I got the uh, the antiviral uh, uh, 
Paxil well, you don't have it now. Uh, not made a huge difference. Uh, that wouldn't be Paxil. That's uh, something else. Not, not Paxil. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've been negative for a week, so figure. Uh, you you won't give me any disease. I better not. I don't think so, because uh, uh, yeah, I have a. Yeah, I, I, I'm vaccinated and all that. And well, so am nothing. I, but it doesn't stop you from getting it. It just stops it from sending you to the hospital. Mm. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll go out to dinner. Yeah, we'll get some yes. dinner. Uh, so, here's the Mark's cards on the set of. of uh, yeah, anyway, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. meets the Transformers, the uh, Sentinels, and uh, here's oh, the. Wow. Uh, here's the set. Uh, huh. I put it in Mom's old room, so. Wow. <laughs> Huh. It's on. It's on the white table. Just oh, place. okay. I was gonna say, where'd you get such a big table from? Well, it's a table, but then it has the these on top of it. it. Huh. And here is a. Here's the robots Tend to fall over and fall off the table and break. <laughs> Probably. Other well, reason. Make for a good bloop. <laughs> Actually, the bloopers have been rather, uh, rather uh, subdued for some reason. <laughs> I've been doing it for a. Of a little over a week doing the movie, and then, uh, hmm. and every time there's a blooper and somebody falls over, I just go darn it, and then pick it back <laughs> up. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah so. I guess that's good. It's not, it's not as uh, as funny because it's Clint Cowpoke directing it, so he's like, well, I don't care if dude falls over I'm and all that. Lackadaisical about it. The Robotech meets the Sentinels, Liberations, and these three scripts are roughly the same length as the. Uh, as the trans tech was back in the day, each trans tech, so they're about the same size. So I'm thinking, uh, look at a two and a half, three hour movie for each one of these Crime. videos, or a mini series, yeah. a mini series, yeah. Huh. So uh, about an hour of it's done. Yeah, so we're on the set. So yeah, here we are we going to, we're going to go out to dinner though, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's the plan. Do you want burger? You wanted burger two weeks ago, so we, we could do burgers. burger. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, um, so you basically turned this into a set. Yeah, so uh, I couldn't take over anything upstairs, because there's a well, guy, that's, yeah, I think he's at work, but, yeah. I didn't see any extra cars out there, but, and again, I don't know what kind of car the guy has. I think he gets a ride to his work and stuff. Hmm. I think he went off to work, but I can't be sure, so, hmm. so, I don't know. He's working now, he's keeping, uh, interesting hours. Already six. Maybe he's a night shift person. Could be. So, well, that's uh, there's, there's there's something else. That's there's something else right there. All right, so this is a brief. Uh, it's been two days of hiatus, but I built some little blocks for the camera to sit on. Better blocks. Uh, it was hot, and there were other things going on. But now we're back, and it might be hot tomorrow too. So maybe an evening shoot instead of a day shoot, like today. Um, so, uh, so we have, uh, yeah, Cave of Temptation was just completed on Sunday, eight more pages, and, uh, I'll have to check the dailies. Yeah, if we have to do over, we'll do over tomorrow. I don't think there's going to be any do-over, though. Anyway, so that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there isn't much making of, because if we've already discussed this story idea so many times, that, yeah, it's, that's what it is. Cave of Temptation was an episode of the story short A bunch of short stories together make this up. So yeah, that's what's going on. That was one of them. And we're now at page 81. So uh, a little less than halfway through. Okay, yeah. hey, in order to suss this out, Dana is Dana and Bowie are in the, the double trainer bear prep, the uh, the, uh, the uh, super ostrich, which was gonna be in the scene. And making of, I guess, um, uh, it fell apart. Uh, first, one of the hands fell off, so we replaced the hand, and then, and then the other one was falling off, so we replaced that, and then the back piece broke off. So it is now the ship of Odysseus. It has a back piece from another Veritech, and uh, yeah, it's like half what it was. Uh, it's not an original um, one. It's not. So, yeah. Anyway, so this is the Dana scene, and uh, it's a jet fire as it's painted up to a play. But it's seen, seen a lot of shit. So here we go. Um, to, uh, here, yeah. So we got up to 106, got up to the end of uh, the end of this episode. That was about the, 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 the before Challenge of the Throne. That's yeah, the other one. It's the Beast Sore one. Beast Sore and uh, 
it's kind of a about the uh, Dark Star. It's kind of about her. Um, yeah, so this episode of uh, Long Day Filming, and we'll stop for the night, and that's pretty much it. Um, there's no other extras. Uh, Ground Bridge thrown in there at the last minute, just to, because Apollonicus is no longer in book one, so he's gone. Uh, the other the lady shows up later, but she was introduced at the end of this episode, and then she shows up later, but he doesn't. He's in the next one, though. I'm pretty sure he's in the next one. Uh, there were some character names changed around. There were some characters that fit better in different places. Uh, having them introduce themselves is a little weird, but I figured that they kind of have to. Otherwise, it, it who are they? Um, they know who they are, but the audience doesn't. Get it. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think Hope ever said what her name was. I hope the the uh, that the uh, uh, Metal Hawk. So. But yeah, um, yeah, the, the trans sectors were damaged and stuff. Yeah, they were, uh, so yeah, um, apparently, uh, what's his face got blasted in the head as well, so, yeah, uh, Remy, uh, Remy's the, the human way, I, I think that works, yeah, um, yeah, that works, so, uh, and your only scene of Dana and Bowie in the movie is as that weird fake G.I. Joe figure that, that I bought to, to play Bowie, even though there isn't a Bowie. Uh, and uh, the other, the, the Dana is one of the uh, Chronicles of Narnia kids. <laughs> oh. Because there isn't a little child version of Dana. So there, she, there she is. Um, she's probably about 11 or 12 at this point in the series. And no, she couldn't fly a ship. But I figured if she and Bowie got together, they might be able to use the automates to fly the ship. Um, so they, yeah, so they, they, they were taken away by their, their mother story. So, yeah, that's, that's it. So, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it was just to, just to show they're actually in there somewhere. And, you know, <laughs> they're around in the background. Uh, the next two movies, they, they're, they have bigger roles, but this one, not so much. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> So that's it. Make this easier to edit. I'm going to do the next old Flint line, which is after after Regis talks to everybody. Old Flint is in his car here, so I figured why not do Old Flint, Jack, and Karen right here. Um, it's not going to throw anything off because because of where they are in the position. Um, and why not? Why not do that? Uh, we don't know where Max and Rick are. I don't think we need to know that. I just want old Flint, just his stuff. Max and Rick are gonna have to put in later, and Jack and Rick, Karen and Rick. Is Rick still on the ship, or did he come down again? I think he's still on the ship. That's kind of awkward. Yeah. Now you must go and capture the Regent. I can do that, though. All the scenes of Rick Hunter from here, I can do that. I can put Rick on a screen, exactly, in front of a wall or something. Yeah, like that wall there. I'm going to do that. I'm going to shoot all Rick's lines. Rick and Max's lines. So there were a few oddities here on the last day of filming. Uh, the, they're, they don't show them fighting anybody. And they don't. It's not in the script. Uh, they're, they're the dead Zentradi. So those weren't Z dead dead to scale Robotechs. They were supposed to be dead Zentradi lying around. So the main cast was not killed. A bunch of pre people were killed. Um, so <laughs> and then that seemed to be lying around. Um, so by, by the Dops, the Doppelganger. So uh, something's going on. And, and they kind of just end it with the Decepticons going, like, oh, we're going to go to the Space Bridge now. Which they're going to do in this next scene. But it's like, it's like, uh, and then they're going to leave. But then there's this other part where Flint pops in and he says, I'm Flint and I'm going to go over here and fight them. But he doesn't because they don't end up fighting anybody. And Jack and Karen don't fight anybody. Uh, so, yeah, just it kind of a draw. They, they got their six guns and said, yeah, draw. And then they said, nah. 
So it, it was less uh, the Battle of the OK Corral and more, and more. Yeah, we don't feel like it, <laughs> which is a little weird, but but that's what's going on. Uh, uh, rejiggered the scenes we're going to film right now and see if we can rejigger that. Unless what matches what they were doing. Hunter and crew are up on the ship. Flint's on the planet, and and um, yeah, so they're driving around to the to what's left of the, the wasteland there. The Decepticons were down below, and they were going, um, they were shown this alien thing near this other space bridge. They opened it, and Ritter pops out. They were talking about him, so that's there, there's that. But yeah, they, they, they introduce Ritter, but then they kind of, he doesn't really fight them. Stands near the dead Zentradi guys, but he doesn't really fight them. Also in post, kind of cut out those two Rick Hunters that were lying in there, because that looks weird. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, um, there. So, yeah, let's do the rest. So it's Mark's car. It's just arrived on the set. Yes. So it's just wrapping up principal photography on the first Robotech meets the Transformers episode since Space Bridge and the other one. Right. There have been a lot of other Transformer ones, but not a lot of Robotech ones. Huh. Well, there's, there's, there's technically been, um, well, there was Shared Hallucinations, which was 2021. But uh, but that one had some Robotechs in it. But but that was a 2020, 2021, and the STF fun. And there was a there was another one stranded that was 2020, I think. So they've had a few since then. But huh. but this is a full on Robotech meets the Transformers thingy awesomeness. Cool. Yeah yeah. So yeah, uh, let's go out to dinner. Definitely. Because we have I have literally <laughs> one yeah uh, yeah. Uh, so I think I think I got the invid lines. I think I did. Um, oh, I'm like it. It's Nemesis Enforcer. <laughs> Mark's cards here on the set. We're going to go to dinner. And there's some Robotex there. Somebody from Cobra with a weird helmet that doesn't match. Oh yeah, I, I I gave Cobra Commander <laughs> from the movies a helmet so uh, that he would be the evil cult leader. Why doesn't this helmet work? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put Space Shot's helmet on him. Nice daft. Punk cosplay you're doing. Mm. <laughs> kind of is. You know, these elbow things seem like they'd be real health hazards in most <laughs> social circumstances. <laughs> yes, yeah, so ah, it has Damn it. And after uh, Phillips uh, Navy graduation and all oh, yeah. Pensacola, Florida and all I, that. I heard about it and I saw some of the photos, but uh, obviously I wasn't there. Yes, uh, I wasn't there. Anyway, so yeah, let's go get some dinner. I'm Not actually hard hungry. visiting the set here. It's and uh, yeah, Whoa. there he is. <laughs> <laughs> it was Lifeline or the other guy or the oh, quick kick guy. Oh yeah, that's that weird uh, hard master guy, which is a hilarious oh, name. Yeah, hard master and soft master. <laughs> one is floppy and one is stiff. <laughs> hard master, who was the inspiration for uh, the uh, the the channel awesome guy, the oh yeah yeah uh, karate guy. You can tell which one's the top and which one's the bottom. Well, the gray one's the bottom. Well, mm. Soft master would have to be on the box, <laughs> uh, unless he's got like some like, attachments and some mechanical <laughs> attachments. You know, this is a Clint Cowpoke production, and uh, yeah, a Robotech thing. I think the last one did was the end of the circle. We did a lot of these Robotechs. Oh yeah. So yeah, they're um, yeah. I guess we're yeah. Going I, just, I didn't even know we. Uh, yeah. We were filming tonight. I just walked in. And <laughs> I, heard, I heard a line reading. I was like, ah, he a line the reading. Studio. Ew. Well, yes. Yeah. Hopefully I can get to the other two as well. Don't yes. see why not. See why not. Yeah, post production is probably going to take a little while, but a little while. do the editing and whatever effects you got to shoehorn in there. Yeah. 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 So yeah, let's go eat. <laughs> this here is Clint Cowpoke. Rap production on the Robotech thing. Transformers meets Robotech, and it is hot in here. Rams wrap, wrapped up production, principal photography, all the action figures, put them away uh, for movie one here. Um, make this set a little more streamlined in movie two, which wasn't all over the place. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, doing, doing the uh, Robotech Sentinel story. They go to the planet, and they find things out when they get there. So. 
Yeah, yeah, I went over a, uh, elements of this thing, and I know some characters drop in and out of the story. Yeah, that, that's what happens. It uh, happens when you combine several short stories together to make one uh, that some of the characters don't fit in other ones, and some of them do, and kind of shuffle things around. Most of that happened in the final episode. Where it's like, well, we kind of wanted to throw in a little of this and try to guys. We wanted to throw a little bit of and Aster Twice as a character who was, who was not Apollonicus, but we decided to make him Apollonicus because it made more sense in the other story. Like, where did he go? And come back. And come back through the space bridge and tell him how to get there. And then they're trying to tell the regent how to get there. And, um, how to use the thing to bring back uh, Ritter, the space break. You know, and, and Ritter is a trans transformer, um, a female, I put it as a, an assassin, <laughs> identifies as they, and uh, yeah, so it's one of them there, and uh, in uh, 2023, and um, yeah, she's an M. Bison um, as a transformer character. Uh, uh, Tall Spike is a uh, is, is their uh, Guile, Ryu guy from Street Fighter Transformers. Ryu Transformer. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, a bunch of the other guys were different ones too. Metal Hawk was Hope. Uh, Hope was Metal Hawk. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's some peculiar. Uh, they, the, the, the smaller version of uh, Dracula's Prime there is there, of course. They put him out as a studio series. If you want to get him, he's the studio series um, Dark Moon Prime. So you want to get studio series Dark Moon Prime, have uh, your own Dark Moon is Prime. Cheaper than the one that we have to go online and get the dragon one. With the, much more expensive. Um, yeah. Hopefully it'll bring out the Rodimus Unicronus again. And we have, um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so, but, week and a half, eight day shoot, nine day shoot for a thing that normally back in the day would take us years. Uh, we managed to pull it off in another eight or nine days. Oh, we have another shoot, and shoot um, two and three. Uh, I want to put one together and put one out. That's what I want to do. So we have one out. And say one is done, here it is. Uh, see it on the channel, on the, on the reviews, and Pantone channel. Um, yeah, yeah, I want to do that one. We'll see how, how it's liked. I mean, go on to the other two. But, but yeah, that, yeah, it was um, sneaky Regis in the region. And what's funny is, um, although the music's not something that's in there too much, uh, the the gag is that the triumvirate is uh, the, the triangle, the classic manga anime triangle, you know. Is actually the regent, the regis, and Ritter. <laughs> it's the Decepticons. There's Earth ones too. There's with Rick Hunter and Max and Lisa. Not mere. <laughs> but there's also there's also the other one. There's there's Tall Spike and and uh, and uh, Optimo and um, well, it wouldn't be Remy because Remy is the, the, the Scarlett Johansson looking. Uh, Marvel looking uh, Black Widow. She's uh she's she's his uh transector, so I guess it hit them and uh the uh the, the Optimal Zor are the triumvirate there. Optimal Zor, the, the the one lady. So yeah. Who lost his transector who lost her transector Grimes. Uh there was we were gonna introduce there's gonna be a line about Alison Strawberg in this universe, she didn't die. Um, she's alive. But no, 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 we cut that out. Because I figured it's throwing too many people at the last minute. And we didn't need that. No. Save that for later. She's mentioned, but not brought in. Um, it's interesting that the battle is one of those Transformer non battles. Uh, but, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it, I think it works anyway because um, it made the doppelganger sound more nasty. Because <laughs> they killed off a bunch of this and tried. Mark's card suggested, why don't you paint them green or blue? And I said, they're in time for that. 
Um, but yeah. Um. So. So, yeah. Yeah. It's hot. So, Robotech needs a Transformer. Well, the Sentinel story, it's not going to be on Disney+, Plus. not going to be on Netflix. It's going to be on Peacock. It's going to be free. It's going to be on YouTube. So where it's going to be? It's going to be on YouTube. Yep. Probably take us a week to edit it together. Maybe a little over a week, maybe eight days. Put all the pieces together and, and add special effects, because I don't really have them. Um, <laughs> See where everything goes, and uh, yeah, I, I, and I think the reason they did the cliffhanger in Mark's Hearts, and I discussed this when he was here, was they expected to do a Sentinel series, but then they did Robotech the movie to test the waters, and that was terrible. And Macross 2 was terrible over there in Japan, but not related. Um, Macross Plus was better. Um, Macross 7 was a little weird again, but we, we like it because we had one copy of it once. Um, you know, and Frontier's alright. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, that, that cliffhanger at the end that everybody talks about, oh, the cliffhanger with Rick Hunter, and we've been over that again, over and over again. And, uh, this timeline is, and, and, and what happened is, uh, and it turns out that there actually is precedent of that in the other version of Macross, in that the Mega Road 01, 02, the Mega Road 02, the SDF 2, in that timeline was launched and lost in space. Uh, so there was precedent of that story, they just got it wrong in the American version. Yeah, they, they got it wrong. So there was actually a cliffhanger, but they didn't think they were going to do any more Macross. But they caught up with Max, so they must have found them uh, <laughs> in Part 7. Um, and, and so, yeah, they, they, they uh, Macross and Space Climber, and, and Macross and Southern Cross and Space Climber New Generation were not connected. They were different series, completely different. And um, Robotech, Maykek, and them connected them and added Rick Hunter's force into the Invent thing, even though they weren't, and and rewrote this, rewrote these Sentinels books. They weren't uh, in 2015. Uh, well, first in 2012, about was when they uh, released the uh, the Transformers Mutant Robotech, our version of Trans Tech, Transformers Mutant Robotech, and um, the spiritual successor to all this. And um, and uh, we brought Rick Hunter home because of that cliffhanger. Even though we knew that in the Japanese version, that didn't happen. That was Jupiter section, and it gets wasted, and Scott Hunter flies up. And there's no Rick Hunter there at all. It never was. Because uh, it's a different timeline. Uh, and, and so, but but in ours, we thought, okay, the American version of Robotech. Where did the SDF-1, where did the SDF-3 end up? It ended up in the Transformers universe, in Transdeck. It kept popping in. It kept popping in in the first one in, from 2030-something. Second one a little bit later, the second one a little bit later. And then it was brought back home at the end of Trans Tech 3. They brought them home and they said, look, there we are, we're home. They re-released those three miniseries during the pandemic and they were put up so you could watch them uh, after, after Space Bridge and stuff. Uh, so yeah, then, then we did The End of the Circle. We did an adaptation of one of the books, The End of the Circle. It was a 90 minute movie, two, two 45 minute movies really stuck together. Uh, then we did Space Bridge Biosync Mystery uh, 1 and 2. They weren't quite as long. Then we did um, Shadow Children and Return of the Shadows, which was uh, filling up uh, Tommy Yoon's spinoff of, uh, of that, going to those stories that they were going to go to. We went to them. Uh, and uh, and, and Shadow, Return of the Shadow, Shadow Children. They, uh, it's 2046, and they go back to 2018. And then they go back to just after Space Bridge and mess with it. That creates this timeline you're seeing here. Robotech meets the Transformers. This is switched around. Robotech meets the Transformers uh, because, of, because of the events of, of, of the um, all Transformers mush. 
in the events of lexicon. So, so. And this is after those two. And we used scripts from lexicons that were rejected from lexicon season one. So I feel like, okay, these, these are scripts that are, probably could be used in Robotech because they're weird enough. And we ended up using the T.L. Aaron's ones in book two and three, but not so much in book one. We didn't use them both. Roy and other ones. Um, yeah, the first story seems to be very concerned with the leadership and how that works and how, how you know, and, and, and ambition and dreams and things. The expansion of that whole Wrath Planet transitions thing just happened to be that it was a coincidence that the stories were written about something like that. They were also fans of transitions and transitions to Wrath and and, and, and Master Commander and all those other stories. They were fans, so they wrote about their, their, their fan stuff. Um, yeah, so, anyway, um, that's it. A little history, a little backstory. Um, yeah, the shoot was, uh, they're, they're, if there are bloopers, they aren't funny. They're just, oh, this guy fell over, that guy fell over. I could probably uh, grab some of them from there, but they're really not fun bloopers. Uh, it was a very serious shoot on the set. Um, had nothing to do with the writer strike or the actor strike, or the writer strike or the actor strike. Because we're not in the SAG or the WGA, so yeah, we're not in that. Uh, so we could go on and do a production during the, during the strike. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Um, yeah, enjoy enjoy this film that this is making of enjoy the film and uh, hope you enjoy making it as much as we enjoy putting it together um, uh, it's for free and enjoy your Robotech uh, thing it's uh, its own timeline like Macross Plus kind of is and Macross 7 kind of is and, it, and it's it, uh, you get to find out the Sentinels. You get to see the Sentinels. What was that? My version of Sentinels uh, involves Transformers because we don't have action figures for Sentinels. Came up with a bright idea. Why don't we just do some Transformer stories and they're the Sentinels. We're always having to count the Transformers. It kind of doesn't work in some places. The scale's weird. Um, but it's fun. It's a fan film. No one's going to critique it for. Oh, that guy over there is not that tall. It doesn't matter. <laughs> plastic action figures everywhere. And, and there are some plastic flaw, design flaws in some of the Joes, so their faces kind of have some stuff to them. It wasn't cat hair. Anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah. That, that, that's it. Go watch it. Enjoy it. Mm. We'll take it. Transform and roll out. Autobots, transform and roll out. We'll, we'll, we'll met, never met Peter Cullen. Frank Welker. Yes, I did a voice for him. And he'll, he's all, well, I'm not out of a job yet. That's what he said. Oh, uh, Surprisingly, he didn't want to be in the Michael Bay movies after that. But no, I wasn't involved in those. Unless you count that weird coincidence that Mark Scars' real name is one of the heroes. Uh, and uh, Cal is in it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's pretty bizarre. I mean, yeah, the names are changed around a little bit. That does look like Grimlock, because it's a Grimlock. It's one of the studio series Grimlocks, if you want that. But yeah, anyway, um, and he does have lines. It's not that he's primitive and has a dumb voice. It's that he's, he's, he, his voice, his intonation is kind of slow. Um, yeah, and, um, and yeah, Max Sterling and, and, uh, and the guy, the robot, Optimo, sound a lot similar. Optimo. Is that a line, uh, a thing to Osimo? No, not intentionally. And they're all Zors. They're Zor Lords. And that ties into the Zor Lords from the original version of the Robotech Masters. It was the Zor Lords. In the Japanese version. The 
devil moon Mars like planet. It's even Earth. Anyway, so yeah, um yeah, they go to Tyrol. They go to the Valvary system. They go to Phantoma and the Moon Tyrol. Yep. Transform and roll out. Moon Tyrol. <laughs> so we have some we sent some visual dailies of the spaceships. We're gonna watch them and um, see whether they they look good. Uh, lots of shots of the ship and, and the bio ship just to make sure everything works. And uh, yeah, they so can use them on all the movies because there's not a lot of shots of the ship really. There's of, of raw footage. You probably have ten minutes of ten minutes of one, ten minutes of the other. Uh, but that's way more than is actually in the movie. You just want to show the ship for a few seconds here and there. Uh, the, the scene where the robots land on the ship is on the ship, which is why they're in gravity. They land on the ship. Uh, so that's, that's a scene on the port side of the ship. And they land on there, and they're, they're physically parked on the ship. So they, they come down and they're on, the, on the hull. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, so that's where they are. Also, you have, uh, yeah, it looks much more really when it's in full color, but but yeah, it, it, it needs it needs keeping the uh, uh, the space sets darker so that you can mess with what's behind them, because if you put all the full lights on and everything, you would see that the backdrop is a sheet on a bed, and it, or you would see that the backdrop was the space set, the wall set thing. It really doesn't. Yeah, we have the space sets, but they're too grayish, and uh, the and uh, and the foldy, and it looks yeah, it looks crappy. Yeah, so so in this case, yeah, it's on the cheap because of yeah, we don't have we have the physical models we built, but we don't have ability to make more and have them be in a space background. It's all done like the post group used to do in the next generation. A uh, physical model in front of a camera being shot in film live in the camera. So you kind of have to, do, well, you can't really even do space effects in the background, shiny lights and stuff, because because you're kind of hinged, hindered by all oh, what's in the camera, what's already shot. Um, there are warp effects that'll be used that, from the other shows, that'll be used for this. Um, because we'll just show you a warp effect. That's all you need. Uh, because there's you don't want to show much of the ship itself. Anyway, so yeah, we're doing. A, we'll see what this looks like. And you'll have to dub in main gun firing footage later. Uh, so that'll be in post. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> if the main gun doesn't fire anything in post, uh, we can we could probably rig up a way to make the main cannon fire. But let's uh, you know with lights. But it, but it will drown out and blare out all of the other, or or warps and stuff with lights, but that will blare out and drown out the other stuff, booty pass stuff. Uh, it just probably won't look good. Um, I'm gonna try it, but it probably won't look good. Um, yeah. So that's that's what we got so far, and uh, we're gonna watch the dailies. Yeah.